What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I'm going to be making sort of a response video to the last video I posted on Tuesday, which was about understanding airspace classifications as a drone pilot. After seeing the feedback left on that video, like some of the comments that you guys left me, a lot of people are wondering how to get clearance to fly in these classified airspaces like Class B, C, and D, all of which surround airports. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, maybe go watch that video that I posted and then come back here and watch this video to get a better understanding. Anyway, without further ado, let's go over how to request permission from the air traffic control tower to fly in these controlled airspaces. Before I get started, I just want to mention that this process is different if you're going to be flying as a hobbyist or under your Part 107 certification. I'll be going over both in this video. First up is going to be hobbyist as that's what I am and that's what I think most people are out there watching this video right now. But if you guys hold your Part 107, you are Part 107 certified and you want to skip ahead, you can skip to this time right here. That's the timestamp. But really quickly, I just want to tell you that if you're going to be flying for hobbyist reasons, like just for fun, you don't need to go through the whole entire process of the Part 107 waiver that we'll get into later in the video. All you need to do is call up the tower like a hobbyist if, again, you're looking to fly just for fun. But on the other hand, if you guys are going to be doing business with your drone, filming videos for real estate, anything like that, then you're going to need to actually fill out that form. Anyway, now we're going to get into how we can actually request clearance. First up, for hobbyists, you're going to need to call the tower. And finding that phone number can be half of the battle. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. But I do have a few different ways you can go about trying to find that phone number. So first up is on the computer. You can simply search it through your web browser. So for example, I'll type in Philadelphia International Airport ATC number and and boom, there it is. Another way that you can do this is by simply going to knowbeforeyoufly.org. I'll throw the link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. Go to Fly Responsibly and then select US Airspace Map, which will provide you with a map powered by AirMap. Here you can just look on the map around the area that you'll be flying in, click on the map, and it'll give you all of the local numbers that you may need to be in contact with to fly your drone, although the map like cuts off at the bottom and doesn't really show you all the numbers. So what I like to do instead is use the AirMap web app app directly or the AirMap mobile app on my iPhone or iPad. I haven't really been using this app for all that long, but all I can say about it is it is badass. I love it and I want to do a whole separate video on it, but for now I just want to show you that if we go down here near say Roosevelt Park, I can just swipe up to see all of the advisories. I can then select the airport that covers the area, which is Philadelphia International Airport, and their phone number is right there. It makes it super easy to contact them. All right, so now that we have their number, it's time to call them to request clearance to fly our drone which I actually already did earlier today. I'll show you guys a quick clip of me calling the Philadelphia International Airport to fly just before the TFR went into effect for the Phillies game. Now this process can be very easy or it can be very hard. As I said earlier in this video, it could be like pulling teeth if you're trying to find the phone number and then try to find the right person to talk to. But I often call the Philadelphia ATC to fly as again, this is my home city. So without further ado, I'll show you guys that clip. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Billy Kyle. I'm looking to fly my drone this afternoon at around 4.30 p.m. Uh, down near Roosevelt Park, and I was just looking for clearance. Okay, Roosevelt Park. How far is that from the airport? Uh, I would say it's probably about four miles. I'm looking on my computer right now. Looks like I'm about four miles away. Um, I also did uh, realize that there's a TFR around the... Um, the Citizens Bank Park for the Phillies game, but I'm going to be flying uh, well before the start of it, which is at 6.05. Yeah, as, um, yeah, once the TFR goes in effect, you're not allowed to fly in it. Yeah, yeah, so I was looking okay. to fly in about 15 minutes at 4.30, if that works. Okay, and uh, how long are you going to fly? Um, probably for only about 15 minutes. My drone doesn't stay in the air for too long, so. Okay, and what altitude do you need going up to that? Um, nothing more than 100 feet. Okay. Uh, you have a phone number? I do have a phone number. Are you ready? Okay. Um, and I'm Roosevelt Park. Um, I'm sorry, where is that? Is it to the west or east of the field? Do you know? I'm not familiar. Uh, so I guess if we're looking at the field, it's to the west. It's to the east of the um, of the airport. And, uh, I mean, it's literally right across the street from the Wells Fargo Center. Oh, okay. You know what? I know where that's at. Okay, cool. Okay, you'll be less than 100 feet. Yeah, um, just give us a call when you're done. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, you got it. Yep. Boom. 
So that clip that you guys just watched was from earlier today when I was trying to get clearance to fly within the airspace of the Philadelphia International Airport. As you can see, he had no problem with it as long as I was flying before the TFR went into effect for the Phillies game, even though they are god-awful. But the process was very simple, very easy. I've got the control tower for Philadelphia International Airport basically on speed dial on my phone because it's the city that I live in. But if you guys are going to be traveling and calling different towers, it could be a little bit more of a longer process trying to find the number being jumped around from person to person to person until you find somebody who can help you out. Honestly, once you get on the phone with the right person, the process is like that, but finding the phone number is definitely half of the battle. Now, that was how to get clearance if you're a hobbyist pilot, but now let's switch gears and go over how you get clearance if you're looking to fly for business under your Part 107, which is a little bit more complicated and actually takes longer. So when you're a hobbyist, you basically get clearance to fly right away if they say yes. But if you're going to be flying under your Part 107, then you need to fill out a waiver. So we're going to need to go over onto our computer once more and open up the web browser of your choice. From here, we're going to go to the FAA's Drone Zone, which can be found at the link in the description or by going to FAADroneZone.FAA.gov. Now from here, you want to log in, which I already am. And once you've done that, we can go to the Part 107 dashboard, which is listed up here at the top. Now, I don't have my Part 107 but somehow I'm still allowed to go into this dashboard. But when we do, we want to scroll down to the waivers and authorization section. You can read some of the differences and some of the directions that they have here provided for you. But if you're ready to go, select create part 107 waiver slash application and select the option in the middle titled airspace authorization. Now it's up to you to fill out all this information, submit the application and then wait up to 90 days for approval. I'm not going to be going through with it. See, now this is where things are a little bit backward in my opinion. I would assume that those who went out and got their 107 and took the time to study for that test and I guess pay the FAA, they would have the luxury of just calling up the tower and telling them what they're doing and going about their business, but it's the other way around. I know that right now AirMap is working out a way to actually request access right through their application digitally so you don't have to call anybody, fill out any waivers, nothing. But as of right now, I don't think it's been rolled out to all users or I don't think it's out yet. I mean, honestly, right now, I'm not really up to date on that whole situation. But when it finally comes out to all users, I'll be sure to give you guys an update. But guys, I hope that this helped you out. Be sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think of this whole process for the Part 107 and for the hobbyist pilot. I mean, the whole entire thing. I feel like it's a little bit cumbersome, but it's just something that you have to do. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.